What's up guys? Welcome to casual round 7 here at GGP Halle. It's the last round of Swiss so we take things a bit more casual around here and now. No need to be professional or something. We go into the well, well deserved break after that. And uh, our players can't afford any breaks right now. You, you can come in. Come, you, don't, you don't have to be shy. He, he's, he's a bit shy. <laughs> there's no space for me to sit, but yeah. Uh, there's, there's, okay. It's casual, you know, don't need space, there's no professionalism. It's like we can, the mic is all over your face, nobody cares. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's be as unprofessional as we can be. I can play with my pen while I'm talking. It's like, um, yeah, that's, that's what we do, that's how we roll here around Halle. So we need to chill out sometimes. But again, our players can't afford to chill out. The, because both players are in a must-win situation, both players are X2 right now, so they need to win to have a shot to make top 8, I would say, let's just go right to the table. Oh, there, oh, there, there it is. We have uh, Christoph or Blaurock on the right side and David on the left side. We don't know what to expect. You uh, met Christoph yesterday, right? Uh, so, Blaurock. No, I didn't. He... Uh, ah came today. I was just uh, told about him attending yesterday. That's a small difference. But yeah, there is the handshake and uh, we also see the uh, op opening hand pyramid again. Yes. What was it called? The Vittorio Victor Gedächtnis Pyramide. Yeah, um, and yeah. Uh, so we see uh, one, uh, two, three three set cards on the side of Blaurock and uh, Grumpel is dead I was asking like he's still alive but he's dead in the tournament he's no factor for debate uh, because it was asked in chat here and good morning or night also to, to you thank you for uh, yeah so we see one monster in front of two back rows so we assume that at least one is attainable because heavy storm is a thing in gold format obviously yeah uh, but heavy storm isn't real if you don't believe in it so uh, we uh what's happening here okay so uh, to, exp to explain the situation here there was an oopsie happening players also taking it a bit too casual uh david forgot to side back after his last round and he immediately realized after he drew his opening hand unfortunately game one was already going on so that's an automatic game loss for david so blaurock is already up one zero yeah, and now we are in a very different kind of side deck scenario. Um, like, uh, both players are able to side now, uh, but neither player has information. I mean, David kind of knows that uh, Blaurock uh, plays a deck that sets cards, so it might not be an aggro strategy. Possibly. Yeah, it it kind of looked uh, at least like uh, Blaurock plays channels like Jar of Meat or something because uh, I think he is a good enough of a good enough player to not um, like just commit into a storm. But uh, yeah, it's it's only a hunch you can can go from. Uh, some questions in the chat. Um, uh, is there any online player still alive? The only player like German DLS is still alive. He's X1. You may know him from Dueling Book. And um, Escaroda, who also plays Warlick, is still four two, uh, still five one also. But the very well known players like Grumpelstilzchen, like JCVD, like Murphy, they are all not longer in contention for top eight, unfortunately. And yes, it is German. We are here in Halle, and ausgezeichnet is indeed a very cool German word. Yes, uh, ausgezeichnet is. Um also, uh, for a single German word to know uh, a pretty good one, uh, usually the only words from a different language you know are like bad words we don't want to talk about, but ausgezeichnet is uh, no bad word at all. Ausgezeichnet is actually also the catchphrase of Mr. Burns in the German localization. In English it's excellent and in German it's ausgezeichnet. So yeah, maybe a Simpsons fan there, just watching maybe. the German dub. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, uh, so yeah, the players are now shuffling their decks, so both have decided how to side, uh, and we are in fact going uh, in the uh, 
in the second game now and we have actual gameplay to commentate now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, someone in chat was pointing out this. it is a tough loss, but yeah, that's also something like, it's a long day, you get exhausted, you make mistakes, but uh, always double check that your deck is in the condition it should be, that all cards are where they should be. It's also a skill to have to just be prepared and be careful. Um, this is a huge drawback for David indeed, but he can come back from this. I believe in him. We see a Thunder Dragon, that's a good start. Yeah, Thunder Dragon is one of the cards of all time, especially if you have have like a graceful charity for example to follow up with your two thunder dragons in hand but even if you have no thunder uh, no graceful charity to follow up uh, having two thunder dragons in your hand also protects you from cards like delinquent duo which is a common staple in every gold deck pampelmuse also an excellent german word <laughs> what does it mean is it's a fruit right but what what fruit is it isn't it no, it's no vegetable. It, it's it's not, a fruit. It's a fruit. It's definitely it's, a fruit. It's definitely a fruit. Yeah, it's a big fruit. Yes. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big fruit. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit... Uh, I don't know fruit that are not, not growing in my parents' garden, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know this thing. Okay, so David uh, is uh, with a tea set, and uh, Blowock is like one-upping his play from game one, setting monster and free back rows now. Let's see if David has a response in the end phase. No decree or stuff showing up and it just play back to David, who's probably on some type of chaos strategy here. Chaos Turbo, Chaos Control, both decks are plenty represented in this event. We see the flip of a Dekuichi and that tells us probably Chaos Turbo. Yes, uh, we uh, have seen the train already before today and um, the Ooh, a solemn that, judgment on the breaker. That's a very bold solemn judgment there. Uh, but yeah, a breaker is also one of the cards of all time. And uh, so we uh, are here and um, yeah, um, to save our back row. And uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I lost my train of thought there. Um, but yeah, the train uh, is right there on the field. How yeah, can you lost it? It's and, there. No, no, that's a train to victory and not my train of thought. Um, the uh, the breaker could possibly threaten uh, other uh, back oh. rows. And, oh, we get the solemn straight back. So if you... Uh, this is interesting. Mask of Darkness and with Zaborg. A really cool deck here by Blaurock who is now on 4,000 uh, life points, which uh, we will change shortly. And uh, Zabok now getting some damage in I'm Typhoon not, in the end phase. Eric. I'm not that good with the terminologies, but uh, do we see a Thunderclap there? Uh, Thunderclap is not playing Mask of Darkness. Judgment of the Anubis! I think that's a Master Lock. That's a Master Lock is a really, really cool deck. It plays Mask of Darkness, multiple copies, a lot of counter traps, and then you just flip flop your Mask of Darkness with stuff like Tsukuyomi and get your Solemns back, and your opponent pretty much can't do anything. I think that's some ver ver variation of that deck. Okay, yeah, then uh, also the Zabok makes a lot of sense. I did not see that coming, as well as Chad did not see the, <laughs> the Judgment of Anubis coming. Uh, I've I'm not sure if I've ever saw this card be activated, despite from uh, what the um, like in the this, anime. <laughs> this, this is a smartphone game. Uh, Duel Links. Duel Links. Ah, and Duel Links. This, this card. Oh, was heavy stable. storm! And now uh, Judgment of Anubis is gone, so we. But would... we got our solemn judgment back, right? Uh, so yeah. there should be a solemn judgment face down. Yeah, it should be face down. And face down there is... is a solemn judgment indeed. And now we are kind of low on life points, Broke but we. Broke to snatch you. There is a graceful charity. I mean, we all we have a last remaining face down, and these uh, this face down card should be uh, valuable enough to protect one's uh, from snatch steel or any other bad card that could come from David in this position. It was pointed out to me that Judgment of Anubis wasn't chained actually because it wouldn't have done anything when chained. It also you needed to discard a card for it. It was just uh, yeah sniped there. Ah, okay. Um, I thought he went for uh, the. Uh, did he chain it? But uh, it, it shouldn't do anything there, right? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, 
I uh, I was not familiar with that card yeah, no, prior uh, to seeing it now, so... Yeah, here, there was a question what Judgment of Anubis does. Um, Judgment of Anubis does protect... Uh, you, uh, if your opponent activates a spell card, which would destroy spell and traps on your side of the field, you have to discard one card in your hand, and then negate that, if, that spell card effect, and also you destroy one monster on your opponent's side of the field and deal damage uh, with... It, in I can't speak anymore. The ATK of the monster will be dealt as damage to your opponent. Ah, okay. It's a pretty niche card, which when it comes up is pretty cool. I tried to use it in Burn before, because it protects you from storm, did some damage, but uh, actually it's like it's very specific. It has to be a spell there card. There is the Black Luster Soldier, which gets rid of the is it a, a magician of faith? Yeah. yeah and, um, uh, JDZ or I, I think it's JDZ. Maybe it's another member of God from pointing out that there need to be a monster on the field to activate uh, Judgment of Anubis. It's a very specific card. Wow, Brock has the BLS of his own as a perfect counter here. Is there a response from David? There's a ring. This would be game. Do we see another counter trap? We don't, and we go and into we game go three. Go into game three. That's uh, exciting. Uh, maybe the solemn judgments so early um, against uh, the breaker was his downfall now, um, because we never saw the last uh, remaining face down card. I mean, uh, you you can't really say that it was a mistake for Blaurock to do it because it was a very specific scenario where you lose against BLS and Ring. Uh, Exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, no uh, that wasn't what I was referring to. I was referring to like uh, investing your life points that easy. Yeah, but that early in the game. It, but I mean, it's kind of uh, the main uh, the main strategy of his deck. I but don't know exactly if he uh, is playing that master lock or if he's like playing a variant with master lock and those counter traps. Uh, we don't have the deck list there, so but it's such an interesting and cool deck and Blorak, um, you may not know him from the gold circuit but he's a very very experienced veteran player who plays uh, even longer than I am I believe he's played competitively since the game exists and uh, he also was quite successful doing it he definitely knows what he's doing and he knows that it's uh, yeah to experience experience with uh, some cards so um, I'm very very interested in uh, I hope we see more of his deck in game three here and again both players still with a decent shot to make top eight cut to uh, keep it in perspective this is table seven so there are not many people who are x1 right now so uh, i think a two or three x2 would make top two yes we got two people with x2 will make top cut and uh one of these two people could be in this round seven feature match um and yeah, we uh, are seeing side deck in progress. Um, how do you feel in this do or die situation? I mean, um, Blaurock has a pretty easy task because David seems to be on Chaos Turbo. And if you're going into a tournament uh, with the size and prestige, you expect a lot of Chaos Turbo and you have a plan for it. Uh, if you're David, it's a whole another level because you have no clue what Christoph is playing. If you have spell trap removal, this will for sure be. If David, for any chance, has a decree on board, then the jackpot for him. Definitely want to have this one in. Uh, but otherwise, only monsters we've seen are were BLS, Breaker, and Mask of Darkness, and Zabok, I believe, yes. Yeah, we saw a Zabok, and uh, yeah, Zabok also put on a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm and was eventually, uh, eventually outed uh, with the Tsukuyomi, which uh, we found another card Tsukuyomi is very good against. Uh, so today we are seeing all the monsters Tsukuyomi can easily out. It's not just all these level 4 normal summons, it's also the level 5 tribute monster of Zabok that easily falls to Tsukuyomi here. Yeah, as you pointed out earlier, a lot of stable monsters in Gold from Earth don't have more than 1000 defense and that's uh, one of the many reasons why Tsukuyomi is that good and that popular in this format because you can out a lot of stuff and it's also like Tsukuyomi is a jack of all trades. You can so many stuff with it. Also, its defense stuff is a uh, defense stuff that is already um, is actually decent. It's a good defense. One yeah. four, you can do you can do something with it. And I mean, after Goat format, Tsukuyomi went on uh, vacation uh, in form of the ban list. For a and, long time, uh, right? It, I, I, if I'm correct, it should have returned like in 2013. So. Uh, 
Yeah. It, it, it returned during Dragon Ruler format. I'm pretty sure Dragon Ruler played it to to book uh, Jogan's face down yeah. against against yeah, Spellbook. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. So uh, <laughs> it went straight from uh, being a staple in one format to being a very good side deck option in the next format. It was legal. So a yeah. uh, very good card we have here. And um, yeah, the players are shuffling the decks. So uh, we are. Expecting David to go first. Yeah, David should go first. Yeah. Yes. And uh, David is playing a trap deck with counter traps. So going first is definitely essential for strategy here. Getting these solemn judgments and <laughs> judgment of Anubis face down there, protected by um, yeah, protecting Mask of Darkness, which can recycle them. It's definitely something you want to do. Um, it's very interesting because he plays Mask of Darkness and so many uh, solemns and stuff. He can can go ham with solemns. Like if you open Mask of Darkness and Solemn, your opponent uh, opens Pot of Greed. You solemn the Pot of Greed. Yeah, of because course. you get solemn back, and so you can deny your opponent a lot of stuff, uh, which you can't normally while playing solemn because you wanted to save solemn for something else. Yes, uh, and um, we uh, need to see how uh, these counter traps. Uh, fair now uh, in this game three um, there seems to be uh, a little bit of uh, a miscount in cards and it would be a very very <laughs> bad way for david to fortunate. go out in this tournament by like losing a card mid feature match uh, so uh, if there are any detectives in chat who noticed where the missing card went uh, <laughs> feel free Ah, okay. Ah, okay. There was a he, uh, shortly before uh, to lose the second game because of his side deck. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, uh, some cameo from Jens here who is watching our boss. Blorok is going first. <laughs> who is uh, who is thumping up on the mat before you? That that's him. That's model after you, I believe. <laughs> uh, Duo is a great start, especially if you yeah. are able to limit your opponent's option with counter traps. Doing beforehand. And getting rid of a mind control there, which is a possible threat to your Mask of Darkness. But Sinister Serpent to the rescue, limiting the damage that uh, Duo dealt here. And we only see a T-set for Blorax, so potentially no counter traps thus far. Yeah, we... Um, but maybe last game he also had no traps in Grave and had like his judgment in the back row and Solemn on the normal summon. We saw it before. Yeah. So uh, David elects to not return his Serpent there, that's a kind interesting decision, I don't know why exactly, there's no point to play around Dust Shoot because you're on 4 cards anyway, or maybe you are not a main phase yet, but it looked like he was about to, to do an, uh, an action, so maybe he just forgot, yeah he forgot, okay, so we see another monster being set there. Um, I mean he could also elect to not do it and not forget it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't see a reason to not uh, pick up something to hand here. I mean, the only reason is if you have no monsters in hand and you want to play around Dust Shoot, then you don't take it. But there obviously was another monster, so I don't see any reason to not uh, return something there. T-Set against T-Set. Who T-Sets better? Is a question here. Um, I really like the, uh, the sleeves of... Oh, and oh, wow. There he got punished for not getting his Serpent back. Yes. Uh, now he will bite himself. Uh, because uh, also can we talk about how oh, oh man the nobleman oh. follows up and he hits the spy that's a devastating blow to David's defense and resources in hand blow after blow from Blaurock here we have to talk about that duo snipe sniping that mind control out of David's hand was so crucial because it allowed Blaurock to safely set his magician there and that was so important situation and now David is only left with one face down card and if he not forget it's his servant. So uh, David got a little peek at uh, Blarock's deck here because uh, of the nobleman. Did they look I into believe. each other's decks actually? I Yeah they did. Okay we normally don't. It's done so it's actually a master dog. It's actually a master so, dog deck. And now we... Do we mill with Don? We we could actually try to hit the Thunder Dragon. Yeah, yeah, he does, he does. I think, and hits a Breaker and goes. Good and hits here. That are both... I mean, uh, Breaker seems to be such a big problem for the deck that it and got... David, again, not adding Serpent to his hand. 
This could and now really Serpent guys, isn't even on top of his graveyard anymore. So yeah. maybe, okay, there is the Dark Mimic level 1. Yeah, so and David, actually not on top about the control. So many controls today. Yeah, there are a lot of controls today. And um, yeah, we did we attack with the yeah, Magician? Yeah, we yeah, attack probably. with the Magician. And there was, uh, it, no, yeah, he, 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 he. he he adds his serpent back to We, we call the serpent into existence, yeah. yeah um, there it is. And he finds Pot of Greed as a reward. Um, yeah, so um, we... I'm, I'm, I'm really um, intrigued by Blorox deck. I've never seen this kind of deck before. Uh, earlier when they prepared for the feature match and he shuffled, I was like, oh yeah, that's a funny warrior deck he got there, but uh, that <laughs> seems to be no warrior deck. It, it seems like kind of a fusion of the hand control warrior strategy and the master lock strategy. But uh, so, oh, Book of Moon and we see the ring! Such a good sequence for Blaurock here! And he made uh, a very good trade again. Yeah, this, there. this was like the perfect out for this exact scenario there. Because Snatch and Book on Magician would have got him bought pot back. Oh, we see a Zora Priest. Interesting card against Brawl Strategy, but Ring definitely helping him. Uh, so David only has Serpent and Azura now, I believe. Yeah, this should be the only cards he has. And Brawl has a lot more to work with. Let's see uh, if he has something to aggress here. Yeah, uh, there is... This is definitely something to aggress. <laughs> <laughs> there is the, the main aggressor of this, <laughs> this format. And, and a tribe, this is a lot of damage. Four fix going in, uh, David. Uh, this is a card, this is a card in hand. And so we have not two cards to protect our field that looks like a very solid position here, yeah. especially when... Oh, it was a set card. It was mind control uh, trying to get... What do you get here? Maybe you get tribe because you have Serp in hand. You can get, you get have... rid of both. Yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, probably yeah, like should just clear the board, but yes. if you... Okay, there. It seems that the back row isn't live. To... Yeah, maybe not. Uh, there can't be a ring to finish because the bro can ring. There's a storm, but what do you do now? Well, there was a torrential and something else. What do you do now? Like, tribe is still killing you next turn. Yeah, so you have to get rid of the tribe. Yeah. Uh, there is yeah, the no, you're just dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah David Dragon. Oh, yeah. that. That was a miss. Uh, ah, okay. Um, awesome. Myth thought of his, on his part. Uh, and the Grace would have. Yeah. Yeah, the Grace would have finished it. Like, uh, David could have set Azura here to live another turn, but uh, yeah, it was a very messy game. Like, like. Yeah. What, what I'm doing here, like it's it was a casual game. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a cas casual game. There were a lot of casual oopsies, and yeah. uh, I mean it happens. Uh, Casually it, it forgetting Serpent is at the top of your uh, of your grave, like it happens. So it's yeah, it uh, all was. I believe it was all intended, and in yeah. the end, it was unlucky. And uh, yeah, we, we, we hear both players laughing, so they're yeah, obviously in a good yeah, mood they, still. They, so they, they seem to be uh, not that frustrated uh, with the uh, with the result. With the result. So of let's the game. see. Uh, we maybe see Christoph's uh, exciting deck and top cut. He has a decent shot now. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we finish rather quickly. We will have a Nuna interview, I assume. I think uh, maybe Bauer, yeah. I think Bauer wants to talk to us. He can maybe t enlighten us a, a bit more about the strategy, and uh, then we will uh, maybe have a bit of a break because uh, setting up top card can t take some time. But don't leave too soon. Leave the stream on in the background at least because maybe before the match starts, we will there here be here with a top eight breakdown. Yeah, I definitely try to collect the deck lists and uh, then we will have our bracket set up and we will provide you with that because if you're thinking like the tournament is over, you are f you couldn't be more wrong. It's o o starting now. We are yeah, we are only at the beginning because there are three invites be hand out here and uh, we know no person who uh, has one yet. So <laughs> I mean, screw that casual. No, we need to be professional again. So take your jacket back on. <laughs> Because so now the real show begins. Now we have Top Cut inside again. We were 96 players today, meaning we have three invites to give out to. Uh, is it a good blanket? Is yeah. It, is it cuddly? Okay. So you're ruining it's my. It's very comfy. This is uh, this is great. You're ruining everything like you always do in my we life. Are, we are playing comfy <laughs> top eight now. <laughs> Let's do comfy top eight. We can we can do like top eight can be comfy. 
top four is very very stressful. Yeah, uh, for top four we actually plan to close the window in the room where the competitors <laughs> are, so that it gets really hot in there and they have to sweat it out. And also we change the music they're listening to to heavy metal. Because yeah. it's like, it's getting intense. It's getting really, really intense there. <laughs> so yeah, we are rambling. Uh, so uh, we stop yapping now and we'll come back with an eventual interview. And yeah, stay tuned. And we are back with another interview here. Uh, and we will do this one in German. So I have to translate it a little bit. So uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, vielen Dank, dass du hier bist. Und äh, ja, ähm, wie hast du hergefunden? <lacht> ja, wie ich hergefunden habe, also ich bin äh, relativ, relativ oft hier. Äh, ich fahre nur eine Stunde weg, ich bin auch sehr lange mit, mit Azienz befreundet. Ich denke so zehn Jahre sind es bestimmt schon. <lacht> ja, so zehn, zwölf Jahre kennen wir uns locker schon. Von, sind schon regelmäßig auf Turnier gefahren und für mich ist das einfach ein Heimspiel und bin gerne hier. Okay, so um, he uh, lives very close by and is uh, a long-time friend of Jens for like 10 to 12 years now. And uh, this is his home arena, so uh, he is the uh, local legend, the local champion who is uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying his best uh, to make uh, Halle proud. Uh, so uh, we just uh, saw um, a blunder in game one, basically. Uh, so the question is, um, wie uh, gehst du um mit uh, der Situation, dass Game 1 quasi nicht stattgefunden hat? Und was ist deine, dein Side-Deck-Gedanke, nachdem also, du nichts weißt und er ein bisschen mehr Informationen hat als du? Ja, war eine witzige Situation. David sieht so, sagt, uh, ich habe noch eine Side-Deck-Karte drin. Ja. Fragt Niklas, ja, habe ich verloren? Und Niklas sagt, ja, hast verloren. So, und dann haben wir dann so im Boden so, habe hab ich gefragt, ob wir boden dürfen. Grundlegende Frage. Und meinte, jetzt so, ja, wir können boden. Und dann haben wir uns gegenseitig gesagt, was wir halt spielen. David hat mir auch verraten, dass er Chaos Control oder Chaos, ja, Chaos Control spielt. Und ich spiele halt mein, meine Control-Variante da, so nenne ich es jetzt mal. War auch sehr fairer Move von ihm. Ähm, ja, und da habe ich einfach nur drei Karten gesighted, mehr war es nicht. Okay. So, uh, they both, ja, um, yeah, uh, after the blunder they made, uh, they told each other which decks they were playing, so that they could. Uh, side uh, appropriately so uh, David uh, told us that he was playing uh, like a chaos control deck and uh, Blaurock here told us that he was playing a control deck so yeah um, after they confirmed they were allowed to side they just prepared and uh, against uh, the uh, prominent deck in the format there were only three cards that needed to be changed uh, so um, you are like one of the cornerstones of German Yu-Gi-Oh, is that right? You are... Ja, kann, kann, man, kann man so sagen, ja. Also ich habe schon immer Yu-Gi-Oh gespielt. Ich habe das Gold-Format damals live miterlebt, war eins meiner besten Formate. Da regelmäßig Turniere gewonnen, auch ähm, im Thüringer Raum. Auch noch ein Jahr, das war schon 2004, ist ja schon, ja schon ein bisschen betagter. Ähm, ja, auch in jungen Jahren schon diverse Turniere da in diesem Format gewonnen. So, das ist so mein Format. Okay, so um, he uh, already played back in the day, like in uh, uh, 2004, he uh, was already winning his local tournaments here uh, and uh, he's basically there forever and uh, my next question is, uh, what changed from like GOAT format back then to GOAT format now? That's a schwere Frage. Also ich denke, früher hat man nicht gerne Urteile gespielt. Urteile waren früher immer so der Hass. Hat, hat, einfach, hat, hat sich irgendwie keiner ran getraut an Urteile. Heute werden die ja ziemlich, ziemlich häufig gespielt, muss ich sagen. Und natürlich, dass das, äh, ich sag jetzt mal, das Meta gesäuft ist. Ja, es gibt ein bestes Deck. Und äh, ja, früher war es halt nicht so. Okay, uh, so uh, the biggest difference are Solemn Judgment. Uh, and, uh, In my opinion. Yeah, Solemn Judgment was like a, a no-no card back then because uh, you are paying a lot of life points for not accomplishing anything yeah. basically and uh, today everyone is uh, throwing one or two around uh, and not everyone is afraid of the card anymore and also uh, basically the format is now solved and we got a definitive best deck and so everything is revolving around that and that wasn't the case back then so yeah um, 
thank you for your time and do you have anything else you want to tell? Uh, ich grüße Niklas Klatt und uh, Felix. Felix macht einen super Job im Stream. Und danke für deine Zeit. In der Tat. Ja, uh, vielen Dank für deine Zeit. Und ja, uh, yeah. so uh, we'll see each other again uh, for Top Cut or the Top Cut Breakdown, depending on if it's possible. And yeah, thank you for tuning in and stay tuned. <laughs>